Hi there, greetings to all my fellow researchers. I am really excited for this presentation because this is my this is going to be my first presentation on an international platform and for that I'd like to thank the organizing committee of the 13th International LISA Symposium for giving me this opportunity. I am Adarsh Mehta and I'm currently pursuing my Masters in Astrophysics and Cosmology from P.D. Patel Institute of Applied Sciences, Charoset and in collaboration with the International Center for Cosmology. So without any further ado, I'd move on with the presentation. So the outline of this presentation is going to be as follows. Please, if you wish, you can pause it and have a look. So in research and in life, motive is very important. In absence of motivation, the both of them seems to become kind of hazy. So for me, it is like sitting in a room and then predicting what lies at the center of the galaxy. Isn't that fantastic? So uh, a body uh, tends to move on a specific path. Now be it a human being, be it an animal or be it a massive object like a star itself. Now this tendency of that body to move on a specific path gives away a lot of information about the surroundings. For example, you have to reach your workplace from your home. You will be having a number of pathways, but you tend to choose a specific pathway. So that will give us the if uh, this that will give us the information of the surroundings of your path. Similarly, when a star orbits a ultra compact object, it gives away the information in the form of the curvature. Now that curvature is caused by the central body. So different bodies like a black hole and a naked singularity will have a different curvature and thus the stars that are orbiting them will be moving in different fashion and that could help us predict what is the behavior, what is the, what is the nature of the central object. Now apart from the orbits, we receive the information in different forms like gravitational lensing and shadow formation, the gravitational redshift, the gravitational waves. So right now, uh, a lot of researchers and uh, research institutes are focused on understanding the behavior, behavior of the galactic center and for that they have been investigating different S stars about their, uh, about which are moving very close to the central object or which are moving farther away from the central object. Now, the understanding of the central object at the center of our galaxy is one of the most hyped question right now in the field of astrophysics and cosmology and I think the orbital motion might help us unravel this mysterious beast. Moving on, we have the Resner Nordstrom space-time. Now just like the Schwarzschild space-time, this is a vacuum solution of the Einstein field equation. It is time independent, it is spherical symmetric. The difference here is that it has a Q term now it is obvious that this Q term is going to have some effect on the curvature. So to know that we will be looking at the energy momentum tensor. Now since these are the vacuum solutions, so the energy momentum tensor because of the mass is going to be zero. But for the Rn case, because of the presence of the charge term, there is an additional component and that is the electromagnetic energy momentum tensor. The components of this part can be calculated as the density is equals to q square by r to the power 4, the real pressure is minus of the q square by r to the power 4 and the angular pressures are q square divided by r to the power 4. Now the intuition I have is that the effect of this charge is going to be limited to strong gravitational field region. Uh, I mean is that it will diminish as the r increases now because, because of this r to the power 4 term. Apart from that, the Schwarzschild space-time, Schwarzschild black hole has a unique solution of the event horizon at r is equal to 2m, while the Resner Nordstrom has two different solutions, that is an inner horizon and outer horizon. Now we can uh, determine these equations by diverging the GRR term in the metric, and uh, this implies that at uh, at when the mass and the charge of the black hole are going to be same, the two event horizons are going to be 
merge they are going to be degenerate and that will be resulting in an end to an extremal black hole but uh, what is interesting now is what if the q increases the mass of the black hole so that is interesting because the term under the root becomes negative which implies the position of the event horizon becomes imaginary that is an indication of the formation of a naked singularity so you see a black hole is evolving into a naked singularity that is very interesting but uh, for this presentation we will be focusing on the geodesics so to determine the geodesic we will be doing a little bit of work and we will be using a bit of help from the constants of this journey so the constants through this journey are the energy of the particle the angular momentum of the particle and thanks to the killing vectors which help us derive these two constants so the killing vectors are basically they are the constants along the geodesic then we have the time like geodesic condition that is the scalar product of the four velocity is equals to the negative of 1 and to make our process a bit more easier we will be constraining the path to an equatorial plane where theta is equals to pi by 2 now using all these companions and modifying the line element of the r and space time we will have this equation and oh yes you can clearly see the kinetic energy term and then you see that this can be modified into a form where we can call it the equation of energy so molding it into a familiar form we have the equation of energy and voila you have the effective potential now this plot over here is done using wolfram mathematica now our potential plays a very important role because this tells you what kind of orbit you are going to observe so when the energy is equals to v minimum or v maximum we have a circular orbit but when energy is equals to v maximum you have an unstable circular orbit obviously because the nature tends to remain at the minimum potential and then we have energy is equals to the potential we have different turning points now this is the region of bound orbit and the stars that are orbiting the galactic center are to be located in this region if we have the energy greater than 0 and less than v maximum we have a scattering orbit a particle approaches the central body and then scatter to infinity then we have the energy greater than v maximum and that is when you might have an orbit where the particle actually plunges inside the black hole but the potential tells you a lot of information but that is in general so to be specific about the geodesics we need to find the d phi by dr term how the phi changes with r and that can be done by recalling your constants and considering in the equation of energy and then you have this d phi by dr term we parameterize r is equals to 1 by u and give it a differential form and you have this as your equation of orbit now all you have to do is plug in this equation into a software i am using wolfram mathematica but for you it's your choice so when you plug in this and when you solve this and bam you have the plot for the orbits of a particle around the resner not some space time so now here is the comparison of potentials in rn space time and schwarzschild space time for different regions the first image over here is the region for strong gravity regions and we can see that our intuition is being confirmed the there is huge difference between the potential of the rn space time and the schwarzschild space time the there is a uh, there is a centrifugal barrier that prevents a particle from falling into the black hole until and unless the angular momentum of the particle is zero then you have this second image which shows the effect of charge on the position of the v maximum how the v maximum is differing then in third image this is the weak gravity region you can see negligible difference in the weak gravity region the potentials are approximately matching so this makes it hard to differentiate so imagine a star in the weak gravity region and you want to be able to differentiate whether the central body is a black hole or a naked singularity or is it a schwarzschild black hole or is it a is it a resner not some black hole right so after confirming our intuition 
we will be moving on to see the trajectories in the space times so the red trajectory is for the schwarzschild black hole and this orange is when the particle is moving in rest and not some black hole so it is crystal clear that in the weak gravity region they are actually moving in the same path there is they are like immensely there is immensely close they are immensely moving in the same same path and in the strong gravity region we have a sufficient we have an uh, effective difference the effect of the charge and the precision is quite significant and that can be seen from this image now you see the precision of in the schwarzschild and precision in rn but i am repeating again what if the star was located farther away so we can confirm that the effect of the charge is diminishing as the r is increasing so now we have the data of the s2 star around uh, around the sagittarius a so the eccentricity is 0.88 the semi major axis is 0.005 parsec the mass is 4.3 into 10 power 6 solar masses all the data are in solar mass per sec and for velocity it is kilometer per second the table here shows the astrometric measurement of s2 star i have uh, used this table from the research paper shown over here and this plot has been done in wolfram mathematica so this is our experimental data now we will be doing is taking the experimental data taking the theoretical data and try to fit them so when we fit it we see that uh, this here image is of the particle uh, trajectory in Schwarzschild space-time and here is of the uh, the resonant or some space-time. Now you can see, clearly see, these two images are showing negligible difference. They are showing approximately no difference even if there is a component of charge. So this means that the S2 star is located comparatively farther away but can you say where the effect of charge comes into picture and to understand that we will have to look again to the potential that the s2 star feels in presence of source shield and in presence of resonant not some space time so here you see the v maximum is located in the range of 10 power minus 6 parsec the minimum is located somewhere uh, in the range of our s2 star obviously because it is orbiting and the data are actually the same that we have used for uh, plotting the orbits but if you see the Ressler Nordstrom black hole this here is the local minimum and this over here is the global minimum the effect of the charge is in the range of 10 power minus 11 parsec while our S2 star is located at 0 0.005 parsec so we are not going we are not going to see an effective difference between them and thus the central body is still a mystery the question of what kind of behavior what is the nature of the central body is still a mystery so i would conclude my presentation as follows the effective of the the effect of the charge tends to be limited to extremely strong gravity regions the s2 star is located farther away comparatively to observe the effect of the charge uh, the fitting of the orbit of S2 star suggests that it would not be sufficient to predict the beast at the galactic center for now. We need to have more data, more theoretical and experimental data to compare. So the mystery is yet to be solved. The Now it could be a black hole, it could be a naked singularity, it could be uh, eternally collapsing objects or we need to be ready to expect something that is unexpected we need to keep our vision wide and we need to accept the unexpected i'd like to acknowledge uh, professor pankaj joshi dr dipanjan de uh, mr pat bombani and mr ashok joshi for their constant motivation their support their guidance throughout this work and the references i have used to during this work are as shown here now Thank you so much. The time is being limited to 15 minutes, so I cannot be more specific. If you have any specific questions, if you have any comments, if you have any critical comments, if you have any appreciating comments, I am open to all. Please do comment in the text box. Please ask questions.
थैंक यू सो मच